One question that I get asked a lot on YouTube comments is what lane should I be riding in or where should I position my motorcycle in the lane? So I thought we'd talk about it this week on MC Rider. Hey, my name's Kevin and I'm an MSF and Total Control trained rider coach and I release a weekly video here on MC Rider focused on road skills or road strategy to help make you a better rider. Let me take a minute and talk about MC Rider membership. And from the first time I came up with the idea for MC Rider, the primary goal has always been to take some knowledge that I had gained as an experienced rider and riding instructor to help others improve their skill on a motorcycle. At that time, the only component of MC Rider was the weekly video. So, of course, this was the most valuable thing that I had to offer, and I wanted to offer that free of charge to every rider. As MC Rider grew, I wanted a way to build community that was forming naturally around MC Rider, and I needed something better to communicate with you other than through the comment section on YouTube. We needed a resource to collect all the great discussions that were happening around motorcycle skills and strategy. So the forums and the field guide were born and they became part of MC Rider membership. So while the weekly video started as the most valuable part of MC Rider, I think my members have flipped the script on me because I can't begin to explain to you the value that's available to members on the forums. So let me bring up a current screenshot of what's happening on the forum. There are writing experts and writing instructors from all over the world who are active members of these forums. If you have a question about writing, there will be someone on the forums with the answer. And these are not answers from so-called experts like you'll find on a Facebook group or some Reddit forum. These are experienced, knowledgeable writers and other writer coaches who are active members and eager to share their knowledge with you. It's all in a no-drama format that's a pleasure to be a part of. So if you're serious about becoming a better and safer writer and you want the full value of MC Writer has to offer, you need to become a member. So go to mcwriter.com slash member, sign up and you'll get instant access to the forums and the field guide. That combined with the weekly video here on MC Writer is one of the best values in motorcycle training that I know of. So lane positioning is something that some riders just don't think about. And I know that's the case because I see a lot of you guys and gals riding around Dallas Fort Worth area using really bad lane position. I hear a lot of riders say that it feels like cars are out to get them every time they go for a ride. And if you have a lot of close calls on your motorcycle, your lane position may be one of the areas of your road strategy that's suffering. Finding proper lane position should be one of those often used tools in your daily road strategy. Before we look at some examples of good and bad lane positioning, let's talk about why it matters. Lane position matters because it has a direct impact on at least three very important aspects of riding a motorcycle safely. It affects your proximity to the hazards on the road. It also affects how well other riders are likely to see you, and it affects how well you can see up the road. So I see riders sacrificing these three keys to a good road strategy on a regular basis. So finding a good lane position is not a simple answer like a lot of people are asking on the YouTube comments. It's more like an art form, and other factors on the road have a direct impact on what the proper lane position is at any given time. So when a rider asks me what the proper lane position is, the answer is, well, it depends. It depends on the traffic and the vehicles around you. It depends on the condition of the road. Is one lane graded and the other smooth? Does one have a lot of gravel in it? You may pick up one lane position for a long stretch of straight highway and another lane position if there is a curve up ahead. So finding the proper lane position requires the rider to be aware of what's happening around them and placing the motorcycle in the best position so that they have the best chance of staying upright. So we've already mentioned three important rules when it comes to picking the proper position for your motorcycle on the road. So as you're riding, ask yourself these three questions when selecting your lane position. Does this lane position Place me or the motorcycle too close to hazards. Ask yourself from this position, am I giving other drivers the best chance to see me? 
and ask yourself, can I see what's happening around me and up the road? So positioning at times is a game of give and take, especially riding in the city. There are brief times on every ride where I have to sacrifice one or more of these three rules that we just mentioned in order to preserve another more important rule. Maybe road conditions or traffic is such that I have to briefly ride closer to a hazard than I would otherwise if the traffic or conditions were different. Maybe I have to temporarily be in a position where it would be more difficult for other cars to see me. But one thing that I very rarely give up on the road is how well I can see up the road and what's going on around me. So if a large truck pulls over in front of me and blocks my view up the road, I don't want to stay in that position for very long. I'll start immediate action to correct that, whether that means speeding up or slowing down or changing lanes. I will actively put the motorcycle in a position where I can see up the road. I don't like that feeling of riding blind to what is ahead of me on the roadway. So let's look at some various road conditions and talk about using our road strategy to select proper lane position. So here we got a single motorcycle out on a two lane highway. He's got wide open possibilities of where he could position his motorcycle. Best way to picture it is to show with numbers. He could select position one, two, or three, wherever he wants to position his motorcycle on the road. You know, a lot of things are going to determine where you want to ride. Position one is probably going to give you the best view up the road and give the cars coming the opposite direction the best chance to see you. But it's also going to place you closer to cars coming in the opposite direction. Two is going to give you the most options. You can swerve to the left or the right in position two, but position two is also where oil and grit and stuff like that will gather on the road. Position three is going to put you furthest away from traffic coming in the opposite direction, but it's also where road debris tends to get pushed to is to the outside of the lane, so you'll find more debris in those position three on the road. Things change a little bit when you've got cars and traffic around you. So I see riders doing this all the time out on the road. They put themselves directly behind that car in front of them. So not only is their following distance really bad, but they position themselves right in the center of that car ahead of them. So you're putting your trust in whatever that car does ahead of you. If they straddle over a big piece of rubber or something in the road, you're going to hit it because you've got no visibility of it up the road. So our rider can help himself a lot just by simply backing off a little bit. Getting that two to three second following distance is going to give him a huge advantage. One other thing he can do is just move to the position one. That way he can see up the road and he's got a good following distance. But remember, our lane position is variable. So traffic and other road conditions are going to dictate where we want to be on the lane at any given time. So when a big truck like this is coming in the opposite direction, you can simply move over to that outside, that position three. That's going to keep your visibility, though not quite as good, up the road, but it's going to get you away from that hazard. Then once the hazard moves out, you can move back over to position one. So you're constantly moving the motorcycle within your lane to give you the biggest advantage when going up the road. So let's go to an intersection here. What's wrong with our lane position that our rider's got now? So we've got a yellow car that's going straight through the intersection. We've got a black car that's wanting to make a left-hand turn. We've got a motorcycle that's in position three, and he's fairly close to that yellow car ahead of him. The problem is that that black car is wanting to make a left-hand turn. So he looks up, and now he sees that yellow car and the white car, and he thinks, man, once that yellow car gets passed, I can squeeze in between these two cars. And he doesn't see our motorcycle rider at all. So the yellow car passes, and now our rider's in trouble because that car's pulled out directly in front of him. So yes, the car is legally to blame, but there was something that rider could have done about it. Had he simply moved back to a better lane position like this, it would have given that car a much better chance of seeing him coming up the road. So let's go to another scenario here. We've got a yellow car again that's going straight through this intersection. We got a black car that's wanting to make a left-hand turn again, and now our rider's in position one. 
So position three was the bad choice last time. Now our rider's in position one. What's happening is this black car is gonna look to the left and he's gonna see that yellow car. He may miss that motorcycle, but I guarantee he's probably gonna give a brief look to the left and then he's gonna put all of his attention to the right. So he's looking to the right to see if it's clear for him to go. Soon as that yellow car passes, he's on the gas and he's pulling out. And again, our rider finds himself in a bad position because he's placed himself in a blind spot by his poor lane position. So a better place for our rider to be would be in position three this time because that gives him the best chance to see the black car and it gives that black car the best chance to see him. So position yourself to see and be seen, but be prepared for other drivers to make mistakes. So that's why it's always important for me to position myself where I can see clearly up the road. And if at the same time I can give others a chance to see me, then that's twice as good. But I'm always going to position myself where I can see up the road. So our three important questions that you want to ask Am I close to hazards? If so, you might want to change your lane position. How well can they see me, the other drivers on the road? If the answer to that is poorly, you might want to change your lane position. And to me, one of the most important questions is how well can I see up the road? And if I can't see up the road, I'm actively doing something to change that for myself. So if you ride with these three questions in mind and apply them to your positioning on the road, You'll have one more tool in your tool bag that will reduce the number of close calls and it will vastly improve your road strategy. Join us on the forums. We'll be discussing this and other road strategies that will help you become a better rider. And we'll be discussing this with riders from all over the world who are looking to develop their skills on two wheels as well. Until next week, guys, it's Ken with MC Rider and I'll see you on the road.